On this episode of Regen Automotive, we discover a smoking problem, we remove some parts, we remove some more parts, drill some holes, discover some electrical issues, and finally, go for a drive. My name is Jeremy, this is Regen Automotive, and let's get to work. So before we get started and I pull the vehicle into the garage, uh, the problem, like how I knew is burning oil. For one, it burns, I would say, I don't know, a liter or a quart of oil every thousand, twelve hundred 1,200 kilometers. So say six, 700, 700 miles maybe. So obviously some people would call that normal, but in my opinion, a good working engine shouldn't burn oil at all. So that's the one thing how I knew is burning oil is like I was adding oil, like I said, every, I don't know, 1200 kilometers or so. And then occasionally on cold start, I get a puff of white smoke coming out of the exhaust. So before I pull it into the shop, let's see if it does it. Uh, keep in mind, it is a little colder today. So you will see some white like condensation or whatever frost. Um, but we're looking for like kind of like a big puff of whitish blue smoke, which is the oil burning on cold start. So let's see if it does it. Seems like I need to uh, charge my battery or get a new battery. What we're looking at now, yeah, that's like, that'll go away when it's warm. Like I'm pretty sure that's pretty normal. It's like, uh, I don't know, zero degrees Celsius minus two or so. So that's pretty normal to see like white exhaust uh, when you first start the vehicle. I wouldn't say that's the usual like puff of whitish blue smoke um, on cold start. So anyway, let's pull it into the shop and rip into how I'm gonna attempt to fix it for free. I had uh, two trains of thought going through my mind when I was getting a puff of white smoke, like oil smoke on cold start. So usually that's a pretty clear indicator of valve stem seals, which I didn't really want to do. So I kind of just left it like, you know, just lived with a little bit of burning oil. So I don't have to dig into the engine, but I had the intake off because I was replacing the crank sensor underneath the intake. I noticed there's a bunch of oil in the intake. So and another common issue with these trucks is it has like the PCV system kind of built into the driver's side valve cover. And apparently that clogs up or whatever. It's like some sort of screen filter. Like we're gonna take off the valve cover and I'm gonna show you, we'll see what we see. But anyway, um, once I saw that oil, I was actually happy because that means it's that PCV issue versus the valve stem seals. And the reason why is a PCV uh, essentially like filters the pressure in your crankcase and puts it back into the intake. And if it's not filtering properly, uh, separating the pressure, like the pressurized air from the oil. If it's not filtering the oil properly, then it's spitting oil into your intake and then goes into the engine and burns. Versus if it was the valve stem seals, that's below the intake. So there would be no oil in the intake. It just would leak past the valve stem seals into the cylinders. So long story short, I'm gonna take off the intake and fingers crossed, hopefully I'm not lying to you guys. Uh, hopefully there's oil in there just so I can show you. And then I wanna take it off to clean out all the oil in the intake. And then we're gonna take off the valve covers because I'm gonna do the gasket on both sides and show you that free, well not quote unquote, it is free. We'll see if it works. That's why I'm skeptical uh, fix on the driver's side valve cover. I'll show you once we get that off. But in the meantime, let's get the intake off and see what we see in there. I must say, I do like how easy it is working on these LS-based engines. Like that intake probably came off in, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. 
Uh, so as you can see, I had it off recently. I replaced the two knock sensors there. Um, so that's why there's not a whole bunch of oil pulling out of this like there was the time I worked on it. Yeah, you can kind of see a bit of oil pooling in the middle of the intake there. And then at the bottom of our runners, this has been just sitting here for a couple minutes. And you can see the oil draining out of the runners. So again, that shows me that there's oil getting into the PCV system versus same thing here. You can kind of see how uh, there's a bit of carbon on the intake runners on the head. If it's a valve stem seals, it'd be leaking right out of that seal where it seals on the valve and none of that oil would get like above that valve stem. So that's how I know it's that PCB issue. So now with the intake off, I'm going to plug up our holes there and then let's uh, get the valve covers off. Okay, so we have the valve cover off in question, and I can kind of see part of the issue, uh, what people are saying online. So apparently there's this uh, drain hole here, and this tiny little drain hole in the corner there. And yeah, that's closed off, so just that hole. So the idea is that uh, oil is heavier than air, obviously. So just the air, the... Um, pressurized air in the crankcase goes through that hole and the oil stays down but apparently the way the push rods go they push oil up into this hole and there's this tiny just this little weep hole to drain and it actually looks like it is filled with oil already uh so i'm actually going to do some pressurized air i'll set you guys up i'm going to see maybe i might put pressurized air through there plug off that pcv fitting and see how much oil comes out there and then the free modification is apparently you drill a bunch of uh Video I watched, the guy did 730 seconds, so I'll just find whatever drill bit. And apparently, you bu drill a bunch of holes at the bottom of this plate to allow the oil to drain down so it doesn't get sucked into your PCV. And after seeing our intake, uh, I could totally believe that's the issue here because you know everything looks pretty dirty and carboned up, and this little weep hole is already filled with oil. So let's uh, spray some air in there and see what comes out. There you go. Look at all that oil that pulls out. You see right there, out of this hole here? There's all that oil that's going in the intake. But you can see, I guess there is another drain hole here and you can see all that fresh oil. That's all that oil that's going in the intake right there. So let's clean this up. I'm going to clean everything up, get all the carbon, oil, all that crap, and then we'll drill our holes, and then I'll take special care to get rid of all the drilling metals filings too, because obviously you don't want that going into your engine. I got the cover nice and cleaned up here, and then I actually noticed it does have these little drain, these rectangular drain holes there. I didn't even see that before because there's so much carbon and uh, carbon, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, anyway, I didn't see that before just because it's so caked up. So what I did is I filled this little chamber with carb cleaner while I took lunch. And I bet you just breaking up all that carbon and oil and crap and getting those ports free, I bet you that will fix it alone. But I'll drill those little holes just to add an extra layer. Um, yeah, so I'm going to clean that up get it all blown out, get as much of the crap out of there as I can, and then we'll get a drill bit and drill some little holes there. Okay, so I got some, whatever size that was, I think it's like 1364th or something, uh, holes drilled, just kind of use me medium size drill bit there, and then I deburred all the holes, so I just stuck a little pocket screwdriver and just went in and cleaned any little like burrs or flakes that's attached to the hole. Um, yeah, drilled through. Uh, I rinsed it out. I had like some cleaning solution that I've been using, so I rinsed it out thoroughly, 
blew it out, rinse it out, blew it out. So I'm confident there's no leftover metal there. It actually looks pretty good and clean. And then looking at our engine here, looks like I actually took pretty good care of it. There's like no sludge or carbon built up in the engine. So let's uh, get you set up here and put this thing back together. Okay, so like I said, through the magic of editing, let's get it back together. <sighs> to tell you the truth, that was easy to work on in the sense that there's no hidden bolts and, you know, wiring harness and stuff in the way, like, the valve cover is held on with four bolts and the coil pack cover, whatever it is, coil pack harness was held on with five bolts and... You know, everything was relatively easy to get off, but that still was tiring. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm tired right now. Um, yeah, it's just, like, because the truck's kind of taller, so, like, being bent over the hood, and I don't know. I've just done this a few times, so I'm just tired, and I don't feel energized after doing that job, but I don't know if anybody does after working on cars, but anyway, let's uh, do the first start. I purposely haven't started it just so we can do the start together. And then I'm curious if we have any intake leaks, fuel leaks, all that stuff. So let's jump in the car and start it up. Okay, are you ready? First try here. Okay, I have something missing and I know exactly what it is. Earlier, I pulled the fuel pump relay to bleed down the fuel line before unplugging it, or before disconnecting it. So let's put this back in and try again. One more time. Let it prime up. There you go. <laughs> that wasn't the uh, smoothest start that I was looking for, but didn't surprise me, I guess. Actually, yeah, I did. Uh, for one, I disconnected the fuel line and then I drained all the fuel out of the rail there in the injector. So that makes sense. That had to uh, charge up the fuel pressure. So let's see if we have any leaks. So that connection at the fuel line, that one connection, that looks good. The other connection looks good. I don't hear any hissing. It's not idling weird, so I don't think we have any intake leaks. No oil coming out of our valve covers, so that is pretty good. Let's check the rear. Oh yeah. I mean, it's been in the warm shop now. So, again, you and I will never know if that's properly fixed because like I said it happened so intermittently so I can't check right now and then uh, to give you guys a little or to let you guys in on a little secret I'm actually selling this thing reason why is I had the excursion there which I originally wanted to buy to replace it but just too big heavy clunky old diesely stinky for uh, what me and my wife need it for so if you see in the background, there's actually our next off-road project. That is a Nissan Xterra that needs the timing chain. So originally uh, the plan was to replace this with that, but my wife didn't like it and I didn't disagree with her. So I got that from auction, that Xterra. So stay tuned for that guys. There's lots of fun co content coming out on both of these vehicles actually. All right, you guys figured I'd finish off the video here going for a cruise. I must say it is quite satisfying. I was mentioning earlier how, you know, I don't think anyone has, feels energized after working on cars, but for me, why I like doing it, it's quite satisfying um, once you fix a car and then you take it for a drive and everything works. Like, I, I've done so much work to this thing. I've done all the steering components, ball joints, serviced, differentials, uh, the transmission. For those of you who've been following my video or my channel, the transmission's been out of this thing three times and it's finally working. No lights on the dash, uh, you know, with that fix, I expect there to be no oil burning now. So yeah, I think this is why I fix cars, just that satisfaction of everything working. Like I'm just cruising along at 80 kilometers an hour here with no lights on the dash for 
2004 GMC with 280 or 90 298,000 K. So yeah, I think uh, that's why I fix cars. It's satisfying when you fix broken stuff. Anyway, I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for watching you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and have a good day.